Hey everyone, I'm Danny and welcome to Wizardry Workshop. Today we're going to be making the Makusa Aurror ID card. And there are several templates in here um, that you need to print out and do various things with. We'll go over all that. Um, you're gonna need just a few easy tools here, unless you're gonna do the gold foiling like I'm gonna do in this video. And uh, if that's the case, then you're going to need the mink gold foil applicator or some other way to apply the gold foil with heat. All the supplies that I use to make this are uh, linked in the description box below. Also, the templates are free to download and you can find a link to that in the description box below as well. All you need to do is log into my website and then you get access to all of my free templates. If you are new here, consider subscribing for more Harry Potter DIYs just like this one. But let's get into it, guys. So. Um, as I said, there are several things to print out. First, we need the two pieces of the Aurar ID card, and uh, that is printed double-sided on cardstock. And then we need the uh, background texture and this black uh, Auror ID card that's like the cover of it. We're gonna gold foil that. So the background texture on this one, I printed with an inkjet printer, and then I printed the pattern that goes on the front with a laser printer. So to do that, obviously I just printed this on cardstock on my inkjet printer, and then I did a test here where I put the, word, the letters BR in the bottom right corner, standing for bottom right, in my printer. So when I put this in my printer, it went in like this, and this was the bottom right for me, so I was standing facing it this way. And then I printed this once on that. So that was just my test, and then I made sure that when I put this in, it, the bottom right corner that I want, where I wanted like this to be, such as right here, was in this side of the uh, paper. So anyways, yeah, just wanted you guys to know how I line things up when I print them out like this. So that's that. And I did the same thing with this one, but I didn't have to do the test. It's just a pattern. Um, I didn't have to do that bottom right test. I printed this green color. It's a very dark green on my uh, inkjet printer and then the actual pattern, as you can see here, was printed on my laser printer. So the reason we're doing this is because we're gonna gold foil this and um, the gold foil will stick to anywhere that the laser toner is. It won't stick to the ink from the inkjet printer but it will stick to the laser toner. So after that we have a couple of other things. This is, uh, I'm, I'm doing Tina's uh, Tina Goldstein's ID. So this is printed on kind of like a uh, glossy paper here. Um, I didn't have a thick glossy paper, so I'm actually going to glue this down on top of a piece of cardstock right here so that it's more like a thick photo paper. But if you have photo paper or you want to just buy photo paper, go ahead. I just didn't have any on hand, so this is how I'm doing it. And then we also have this little pattern that we can print off on just regular white paper. And then these pieces, which we're going to use as a cut guide, which we can print off on just regular white paper as well. Oh, and also I should probably mention this. Okay, so this is actually filled out with Tina's handwriting. Um, I'm gonna place her photo in right here, but I also have a blank one, so you can do one for yourself as well. Anyways, okay, let's go ahead and do this. I'm just gonna use a glue stick, and I'm just gonna see where her photo is here, flip it over, and then I'm going to put some glue right behind where her photo was, right there. And then I'm just gonna glue it down onto the cardstock right here. So there we go, and we'll just let that dry. And while that dries, we'll continue on. So next, I think the most important part is I'm just gonna put some of these pieces aside, some of these template pieces aside. I think the most important part is to go ahead and gold foil these. And I'm gonna do that with a mink gold foil applicator like I mentioned earlier in the video. And uh, if you don't have that, you can use a heat gun or something, but you are gonna need a few things in order to make sure this works properly. First of all, you need heat activated gold foiling, which I have right here. This is like a protective plastic folder. So we will put this in here like this and then you would cut a piece of the gold foil off, lay it over the top, and then close up this foil, and that protects your paper from getting burned or, or whatever. I just kind of line it up, eyeball it, and then I'm going to cut the foil right here. 
cut this excess off the side here as well, just so it's about the size of a piece of paper, eight and a half by 11. And then we just need a piece that's gonna fit over this little design right here as well. And I, as you can see, the, it doesn't have to be perfectly cut because most of this is going to be peeled off anyways. So now we have our foil set up and everything. This piece needs to go inside this plastic folder right on top of the paper where you want the foil to go. And it should be the shiny side up. Close it up and then sort of, I like to sort of get the air bubbles or anything that's in there out, but it's probably not necessary since this will press it. So now I've got my gold foiling machine set up right here and we want to turn it on over on the back first and then you can turn the heat up. I usually do mine about three. You could go up to four if it doesn't stick. You could try it again. Uh, but if it doesn't stick the first time, you're gonna have to reprint this and do it all over again because once this goes through once, the foil won't stick to the print if you try to run it through a second time. So we just wait for this to heat up. And we just heard it beep. That means that it's ready to go. So at this point, we can just take that uh, uh, plastic folder with our, our print in it and run it through. It's a lot like a laminator. It's just going to go straight through the uh, gold foiling machine and out the back. And there we go. Now we can lift this up and take our print out. And then we should be able to just kind of lift this up. And as you can see, it has worked. The foil has gone exactly where we want it to. And you can see my camera in the reflection right there, suspended. <laughs> but yeah, now we can set this one aside and we're gonna do the cover of our ID. Oh, that didn't sound good. <laughs> there was some kind of pop or something. And there we go. And there it is. Looks pretty good to me. Also, just to note, I did not know this would happen, but as you can see, it's transferred it onto the plastic. So that, I don't know, is that's probably not a good thing. You might want to put like a piece of paper over that when you run yours so that it doesn't transfer it onto the plastic. Whoops. So I'll just grab my ruler and X-Acto knife and I'm going to first cut out this image. I'm sure that the glue stick is uh, dried enough for me to do this. And now we have a photo of Tina on cardstock with the kind of glossy part over the top. We can also cut out these two cards. So now we have the two ID cards and Tina's photo cut out, but we're still not ready to do anything with these yet. So let's set these aside and then we'll move on to this pattern right here. And for this pattern, that's what this is for. We're going to put this down on top, line it up and then staple it down. Uh, one, probably one staple on each edge should be good. We're just gonna staple it on here. And there we go. So we've stapled it down that way. They're not gonna move around as we cut. Before I do these last cuts on these triangle pieces, I'm gonna use scissors just for those little squares. So now what we have are these two rectangular pieces as well as these four triangular pieces. Now we need to do one last thing to our cover. And that's where this uh, template here comes into play. So you wanna flip it over so this side's down and this gold side is like um, at the top. Flip it over, make sure that this is at the top. So this should be on the reverse side where that gold is, the gold foiled part. And we're going to just 
line them up, and then we are also going to staple this one down once we have it lined up properly. However, this time we're not going to do cutting. We are going to use a ruler. We're going to be doing scoring. So we're going to score this so that on this side there will be parts that are kind of raised a little bit. Um, and to do that you can use a scoring tool. This is the Cricut scoring tool that I'm using here with a ruler. Um, you could also use like the dull end of a small paintbrush. But yeah, it's pretty easy. Just line up the ruler with one of these lines and then trace it with the scoring tool that you're using. And then on the other side, you can see that it is slightly raised right there. You can see that line that I made. I might reinforce that a bit more. It's not quite as raised as I want it. But yeah, that's what we're going for. Let's go ahead and do the rest of these lines. Okay, so now I've finished my scoring and you can see where the light hits it, where the scoring is. Um, there were a couple parts like over here that kind of got a little ripped, but that's okay. This is supposed to look old. I will be kind of aging it a little bit in just a minute and hopefully that's gonna kind of cover those spots up a little. But now we're done with this scoring template. As you can see, it's all ripped up. So we can just rip that off. And now we can cut this out. And you wanna cut it out with this foiled part facing up. And there we have it. I think first we should work on these pieces with the foiling. So one of them has corner pieces on the top and the other one has corner pieces on the bottom. So I'm actually going to take the corner piece and place it right in the corner there. That's what we're looking for. We want that corner of the card, the larger rectangular card, lined up right in the corner of our triangle piece like that. And then we're gonna fold these two edges over. There we go, we folded one. And then we can fold the other. Just like that. So now that's what we're looking for. So that this corner piece is right there in the corner of this card. So do that on the bottom two corners of one of your cards and then the top two corners of the other one of these cards. So now I've got all those corner pieces folded and ready to attach and I'm just gonna show you how I'm gonna attach these to the card. So I'm going to take a corner piece and slide it on where I'm gonna be putting it. Unfold it just a little bit so that I can get under there. And I'm going to put a little bit of glue on it and then I'm going to fold this back over so that now it's glued on. And if you're worried that's not gonna be quite enough, I'm also going to put a little bit of tape on there to hold it on even more. So here's what it looks like on one side and then the other side you can see the corner is right there. So again, do that on this side as well, and then on the other one, do it on the bottom. So we're actually gonna age this a little bit before we put it together. If you wanna skip this step, you can, and you can just finish up. If you're doing that, go ahead and skip to the next uh, section of the video. However, before we go any further, I just wanted to say thank you to all of my patrons. Every single one of you guys, I appreciate that you uh, care enough about my channel and my art to actually sign up there. Um, so yeah, thank you so much. Without you, I wouldn't be able to continue doing what I'm doing and it's very much appreciated. Now let's continue on in here. I'm gonna, I need a rag because I'm probably gonna get really messy. And then we're, we need some of this Distress ink and I've got uh, black Distress ink, I've got walnut Distress ink, and then I have vintage photo Distress ink. I'm gonna be using all of these to do a little bit of aging on here. I've got this uh, brush for blending for my Distress uh, inks, 
And then I also have this sponge for a little bit of texture. I'm just gonna rip a little piece off and that's what we're gonna use here. Let's start off with just her photo. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the Vintage Photo Distress Ink and I'm gonna take my sponge and I'm just gonna take one small part of it and get some of that ink on here. And you can see there's just a little bit of ink on there. And then I'm going to sort of go around the edges with it, just sort of blot it a little bit around the edges. So now there's some just kind of dirt or grime along the edge edges of the photo, but you can see if you turn it to the side, it's white on the side, and that doesn't look too great. So what I'm going to do is just sort of get some of this ink on the edges of my photo too. So now what we have is this. This time I'm going to be using my blending brush. I'm going to get some ink right here on my brush, just like that. We're going to go just along the edge and do just a little bit of blending. So it kind of makes it look like it's been sort of yellowed by time, you know, the yellowing that comes with, especially if it's been in like a house with a lot of cigarette smoke, which there was a lot of in the 20s. <laughs> So it makes sense. But yeah, we're just going to blend the edges a bit and make it look a bit more aged and faded. So now you can see the difference here where it has that fading around the edges. Now let's do the part that we did before with the darker uh, ink on the edges so that they're not white where we made our cuts. I'm not going to really worry about the back of the photo because that's going to be stuck right on here and let's go ahead and do that now so that we can have some time to let it dry before we put everything together. Just a little bit of glue like that should do. and We're going to center it and place it. So there we go. And the reason that's not printed on there is because it looks a lot more authentic when it's actually glued on. You can see it's not printed on. Just like, you know, in the 20s, they wouldn't have printed her photo in here. This is all handwritten over here. This is all handwritten over here. And her photo would definitely have been uh, printed, cut, and glued in there. Now let's move along to aging this card. We're going to do the same thing. And now we have our two cards aged with the uh, Distress inks. Next, we're going to be working on this. And I am actually going to use the um, Walnut Stain for this one. It's a bit darker, and since this is a darker color, I think that might look a bit better. And it's actually, as I go over those uh, scoring lines that I made, it's actually making them look a bit more pronounced. Maybe a little too much, but you know, it's all trial, trial and error, see what works and what doesn't. And when we look close up, you really can see the aging that I just put on here. Um, I'm not sure if I like exactly the, uh, <laughs> where it's been scored. The aging, uh, the ink sort of stuck to that a bit too much. However, these edges again are white so I'm going to use this uh, walnut ink to darken those edges. All right so that's all we need to do with the aging. Now let's put this together. Before we do anything else we're going to fold the ID case which this is like the cover of the ID and we're going to fold it directly in half. What we want is the one with the corners on the top, we want to be on the top, and then the one with the corners on the bottom, we want to be, of course, on the bottom. I'll do the bottom one first because I want to be very careful with the top one to sort of correct those uh, rips that I accidentally made. So here's the bottom one, and make sure that it's, I mean, it doesn't have to be perfectly straight, just make sure it's kind of centered. 
and now we can do the top side. And finally, we can put our cards into the ID. So this one goes at the top, just tucked into those uh, corners, and this one goes at the bottom, again, tucked into those corners, and that is our ID card. Um, let's do a little bit of, of hindsight here. So I think the inside of this looks really cool. I love the way the inside of this turned out. It looks great. And the back side looks fine. However, I'm not happy with the scoring that I did. Um, I think I pushed too hard in some places. It ripped through and then when I did aging to this paper, it kind of stuck in those parts that ripped and it just looks not very good. Also, it wasn't completely centered. It looks like it's a little bit off center. So next time I would do the scoring very lightly, like you can see here at the bottom, that looks pretty good. And then over here toward the middle though, you can tell where I accidentally did the scoring too hard and ripped through. Yeah, not too thrilled about that part of it, but again, this is trial and error. I, I've never done this before. I've never scored like that before, so. That's how it turned out, and you know what? It's pretty cool. So let me know what you guys thought about this DIY in the comment section below. Also, if you're interested in a chance to win this Makusa Auror ID that I made in this video today, um, I'm gonna be giving this away. You can find that giveaway link in the description box below. Down there, you're also going to find my 70K giveaway, and this is for all of the Accio Box book covers that I did, which are no longer available, and these fit on the Harry Potter uh, first edition American hardbacks. I'm also giving away that full set so that you'll have all the covers and the books to put them on. And that's when the channel hits 70,000 subscribers. That's when I'm gonna be announcing that winner. So I'm gonna be doing a big giveaway like this every 10,000 subscribers until we reach our goal of 100,000 subscribers here on YouTube. Speaking of giveaways, I have a giveaway winner to announce right now. And this is for the Practical Pocket Book of Alchemy and the winner is Maria Corral. Congratulations, I've sent you an email with instructions on how you can claim your prize. Thank you guys so much for watching this video and I'll see you in the next one.